Dota locals, you usually run into your typical stereotypes of Yu-Gi-Oh players. You got your meta players, you got your rogue players, you got your casual players, you got the guy who's been playing Dark Magicians for 10 years, and you have your prank kid player. Now, prank kid players usually like to mess around and have fun, and they're usually on a different wavelength than everyone else. And unfortunately, I am that guy. What's up guys, I'm Henry from Team Lionheart, also representing the brand Bamani Lounge, and I will encourage you guys to go over to our YouTube channel and subscribe for more future content, but for you today I have a Yu-Gi-Oh! Prank Kid deck profile. This is a deck that I'm kind of known for in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. I'm the admin of the Prank Kid Dodo Doodle Duelist Facebook group, and I've been in love with this deck ever since I first read the cards in OCG before they got released. And I played this deck at regionals, I played this deck at a lot of locals over the years, and when we got the Prank Kid Link one, I was just so happy that I took this locals, uh, I took this deck to every locals I could, and in the last two weeks or so I am 16 wins zero losses and one tie I have won four case tournaments a couple of box tournaments and I have found a lot of success and I'm gonna tell you why in just a second but first I do want to remind you guys please not only subscribe to our uh, Bamani lounge uh, YouTube channel but also we have a coaching service where we have multiple uh, meta players offering coaching for five dollars a month and we also give little perks here and there so if you might be interested in having an alternative coaching to something like duelist academy that's a little bit more affordable then let us know in the comment section below and we'll get you started but i do want to get you into the deck profile so this is a deck that i think is maybe not the so-called best deck but I think it's the deck that has the most win conditions. And what I mean by that is that this deck can win in a lot of different ways. And of course, it has the Battle Butler, where you can board wipe your opponent multiple times in the same turn. And yeah, that usually does end up in a win if you can do that to your opponent multiple times. Of course, with the new Drytron deck coming out, if you board wipe them multiple times, usually they just lose. Uh, same thing with, of course, different variants of Evil Twins and all the new decks that are out right now. They all try to make a board in some way. Usually, it, it's effective unless you're playing against something like uh, Eldlick, then you have to do something different. But for the most part, board wipe, good. But not only that, but the deck can actually do a couple of other things too. Of course, we play Mystic Mine in my deck. And I'll be showing you guys how to win under the circumstance in which you have Mystic Mine. Um, of course, it seems easy, but uh, you do have to manage your resources and play correctly. It's just a very, um, it's a very tight-knit deck. And, uh, of course, you also win in time. So, you have many ways, IRL, to uh, win a Yu-Gi-Oh! game. And, of course, I never endorse slow playing. I never slow play. I always play at the same rate as my opponent, uh, if not faster. But it is a hard deck to play, so you will have to think a lot. And it just naturally gets you uh, into some very long matches where you go into game three um, just in a very opportune way, you know, gaining life points and burning your opponent. So, um, yeah, let's get into the card by card. So, to start off, we have our our prank kid monsters. So, we have the triple fansies, uh, the triple dropsies, the triple lampsies, and the triple roxies. So, of course, we're running all at three. I am playing a polymerization build, so I know a lot of people who don't play polymerization are playing less prank kids, like cutting one of this, cutting one of that, and I don't endorse doing that. I think that's very much a mistake, especially with Dread in the format and uh, Chuke in the format. I think that if this deck just gets its normal summon stopped, you need some kind of extender to keep on going. So I think playing a maximum number of prank kids is correct, and also playing polymerization is correct. So, we're going to go with the full 12 prank kids. So, let's move on to our hand traps. So, we only play 6 hand traps, and I don't think you need a lot of hand traps this format. I know a lot of people think that you do, and I don't think that is necessary. I think you need a mixture of hand traps and good defensive cards. So, we're going to start off with our reactive low ring cards. And these are uh, Ash Blossom and Droll and Lockbird. So Ash Blossom, I think, in a format that's very diverse, which I believe this is, a lot of Eldlick variants, a lot of Dogmatica variants, just a lot of different versions of different decks running around. And Ash is 
okay against Virtual World, it's okay against Zoo, it's okay against most combo decks, so I think you just have to play it over cards like Nibiru in the main deck. And then Droll, obviously, a lot of people are playing Drytron, especially online, but I'm actually playing this card because it's, it has some kind of synergy with another card in my deck, which we'll get into in a little bit. So, to move on, we got three Polymerization and three Pandemonium. So these are our superior extenders. So the Polymerization is technically searchable in our deck. And then we got uh, Pandemonium. So Pandemonium is the quick play spell for the archetype and it lets you quick play fuse on the main phase. And the reason why this is very important this format at three, usually I do play it at two, but I think it's at three because of Book of Moon. So if you normal summon, a lot of people will Book of Moon if you're going second. And same thing with Dryden Pop. So if you open up a hand of two prank kids and pandemonium, you bait the dryden pop by normal summoning a prank kid, and most players will pop. If they don't pop, it's incorrect. So uh, you, you can chain pandemonium to any any kind of quick effects, and it's generally a pretty good card. So um, you have three of each of those. And then again, poly is really needed because it allows you to summon tote before your fifth summon. So it makes it so that you're not only are you avoiding Nibiru, but you could play you could play more freely, and you also get a negate for your opponent's turn. So I think um, Pandemonium pretty good. Then we have some more extenders. So uh, then we we got Monster Reborn, Succession, and it's like a bomb instant fusion. So um, these all turn one, they all let us do the same thing by letting us play through Ash and sometimes Bell because Bell's really good, um, but. Uh, Reborn, obviously you could just bring back a monster, same thing with Succession. Instant Fusion is the same thing, essentially, uh, turn one, because you get an extra prank kid body and get to go into Doodle, and Doodle could search place, and place can get you to another prank kid monster if you need it, or it can get you to Pandemonium. Uh, but obviously, uh, you know, the second turn or the third turn, you can summon a Rocket Ride, and Rocket Ride can Reborn your Doodle Doodle Doo and your, uh, your Bow Wow Bark, so it, it, it's really like a plus three, plus four sometimes, and uh, really good card. So those are our three additional extenders, and then we have uh, two Prank Kid Pranks. So Pranks is a good card, it's really good under mine. So when you have Mystic Mind, and your opponents may be playing more than 40, or you're down in resources, every turn you're shuffling back three and drawing one. So you essentially, after three or four turns, you can reset your entire Prank Kid engine, which is really powerful, and you're drawing cards while you're doing that. So it's very essential to the strategy when you're mind locking your opponent, and it's very good in grind game situations. So uh, play two of that, and then we play a field spell lineup, which I have literally been playing since the birth of the deck. Uh, we got the one terraforming and the, and the one set rotation to search us our two place, our one plant, or our three mystic mind. So. This is essentially four copies of Place, three copies of Fusion Recycling Plant, which gets you to Polymerization, and, and uh, five Mystic Mine. So, Mystic Mine, I know a lot of people don't like this card, but I think that this card is essentially the Vanity's Emptiness of the format, and probably a lot better than Vanity's Emptiness, because going first, if you activate it, you can lock your opponent by summoning a Bow Wow. As soon as they summon any monster, you tag out the Bow Wow as cost, and you add two from your graveyard to your hand, and now your opponent is under Mystic Mine. So, in order for them to deal with your engine, they obviously have to summon monsters. If they don't summon monsters, then you end up, you search a place on your turn that you can just replace your mind with a, with, a, with a place, and you just start playing the game, you go access code talker and kill your opponent. So if they don't do anything, they lose, and if they do something, they lose. So it's a uh, it's pretty good lock, and if they don't draw back row removal, then you could do a play where if they, if they have any monsters at all, you can go uh, summon a rocket ride every turn, poke for a thousand direct under its effect, and then tag it out, summon doodle, and a bow wow. If your opponent only has one monster, then you have to link those again into another doodle, then tag it out, add two from graveyard. So you have a lot of ways to make sure you have no monsters on your field at the end of your turn. So it's really important to play Mystic Mind in my opinion. Even though there are outs to it in the format, it's not good logic to say, oh, Mystic Mind's not good because Chuke is in the format. Because yes, against Mystic Mind, against uh, Virtual World, like they have the out, but it forces them to pop the mine and not your prank kid. So it's literally like there's no reason at all not to play this card because people aren't prepared for it. Even though there is, you know, uh, back row removal in the format, 
it's still really good and it's forcing your opponent to react to what you're doing so and if they don't then you get advantage off of it so uh, we play one more card to make this even better and that is probably one of the best cards in my deck for the last two weeks uh, triple book of eclipse so book of eclipse is a card that's really good under mystic mind situations so i wanted my final non-engine card to be a card that I can draw mid game when I have Mystic Mind on the field that stops my opponent from making a push to out my Mystic Mind. And what I mean by that is there are certain situations where, where either you have a monster on the field already or they could put a monster on your field like against dinos. They can go to Lost World and summon a token to your side of the field and then they have to go Phoenix to pop. But if you Book of Eclipse their monsters then uh, they, not only do you stop them from making that Phoenix but you make sure that they commit one extra monster to the board. So when they're about to try to make a push to out your mind or even if they if they do out your mind and then they try to kill you with access code talker or something like that you book of eclipse the monster that they're about to link off and even though they will draw uh, normal circumstances that's fine because as long as you're able to play with you know at that point you probably have like eight cards in your hand or seven cards i should say um it's really easy to kill your opponent and if you draw your opponent then Book of Eclipse becomes a free card because they can't draw until the rest of the turn. So uh, it's pretty good. Um, I know a lot of people like Book of Moon, but this also uh, baits uh, Dragoon because it doesn't target. So if you're going second, if you draw these two together, then this is like an FD kit because like you can Book of Eclipse, they have to negate or you just out the Dragoon anyway, and then you just Mystic Mine. And then likewise, if you Mystic Mine, they negate, you Book of Eclipse. You can do it either way, but um, it's very good. So. Um, it's pretty good and also what's funny is like uh, you can like force your opponent to deck out with this card because like you can book up Eclipse and if they only have a couple cards in deck like they just draw four and like they have no cards left so it, it's pretty funny but anyway that's my main deck um, and now I'm gonna go to the extra deck real quick so I got uh, one butler one washer and two rocket I really don't think you need more than that then we got Triple Meow Meow. A lot of people play two. I recently played the third because even though you can shuffle it back, you actually really don't want to shuffle this card back because when you have pranks on the field, you're usually turn five. You're usually like at a deficit of prank kid mo main deck monsters. So you want to shuffle back your main deck monsters and not your extra deck monsters. So I felt that the Meow Meow was the most important one to have at three rather than the Doodle because the Doodle, the spell, the search for a spell trap really doesn't matter after turn one as long as you have your pieces you're gonna add them back anyway so only two doodle and then two bow wow bark so this ratio has been pretty good for me and then for flex cards we play one unicorn one trisbania this is really good against elblick usually like you have to force their entire back row uh when you because you're like one prank kid normal summon is a one card link three uh, without going into pandemonium so it, it forces their their back row and if you have a handful of kids and you search Pandemonium, then you force all their back row and then you activate Pandemonium and then you summon Rocket Ride and then you bring back your monsters. So it's very good to have a threat that 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 puts on that much pressure uh, in a Link 3. So we play Axis Code Talker to kill. So really good because you play main deck Link monsters with different attributes. And then last but not least, we play Toad for the fusion play. So that's really it. I don't play a rank 4 because usually when I poly, I try to go Toad because I'm always fear of Nibiru, so I'm never going to go out of my way to not make Toad to try to like win more with, with Dweller, so it doesn't make sense to me, but anyway, um, for the side deck, we got Triple Nibiru, obviously pretty good against Virtual World, uh, likewise we got Triple Lancia, it, it, like this gets mileage by itself because like what Virtual World will try to do is try to negate your butler with King Long, and if you just like prevent that from happening then they have no no way of winning and then two ghost ogre i think this card is pretty good against everything it's like pretty average well i like it the most because against virtual world you can ghost ogre the chuke which is pretty much their only out to the mystic mind so if you ogre that then they lose so that's nice and then we got uh one harpy's feather duster and triple evenly matched for the back row removal i think evenly is the best back row removal in the format because it, it, it like destroys any elbic variant it's like my only answer to the board wipe elbic deck and uh it's pretty good it's even good under mind situations because usually your opponent's gonna like set a bunch of cards because they're like they're trying to avoid the hand limit and if you just set evenly and then you activate it you just like plus four so it's pretty good and then 
really good card in the format. Dimensional Barrier um, stops Zoo from going to Zeus, which is like one of the ways the deck loses is to Zeus. And um, yeah, it's pretty good to everything. So that's it for the deck. And what I want to talk about is just, you know, again, how good this deck is in different situations. Obviously, it's not really, it's kind of frowned upon to just try to win in time, but it's just something that this deck naturally does, right? Like IRL, like time is a thing. And if you could play a deck that naturally just wins in time every single time, like once you win game one, you are so confident to win the rest of the match. It's crazy. So I think that you guys should give this deck a, a try. Maybe online it's not as good as it is IRL, but IRL, this deck, it's crazy because a lot of the decks in the format take a long time to play. Like even Elvik, like they have to like banish cards, they always think about what to set, and it's like the game takes so long, especially with mine in the game. Um, so you usually win in those grind game situations, which there's a lot of grind in, in, in the format right now. So uh, yeah, just come up with a game plan to get over virtual world and i think that this deck just shines really well in the format so if you like what you see give it a like subscribe of course to simply slim simply slim and uh go over to babani lounge link in the description below and check out our edl pro tournament which will be giving out a starlight rare triple tactics talent on january 1st we'll be having a tournament 20 dollars entry it'll be on edl pro so check us out on facebook and see you guys in the next one happy holidays happy new year bye guys